Hello and welcome to another Explorer video. Today we're going to try to lock the opponent out of the game thanks to Possibility Storm. This card's been added pretty recently to Arena, a 5-man enchantment with a very weird effect, saying whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, that player exiles it and then exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a card that shares a card type with it, and then that player may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and the rest goes back on the bottom in a random order. So when played in a normal way, Possibility Storm will randomize the outcome of any spell that's cast, both our spells as well as the opponent's. So there are a few ways you could try and set up a combo where you maybe play some adventure creatures that have a sorcery attached, and then the only sorcery is some big expensive spell that can win you the game. That's one direction to take this deck in. Instead, we're going to try to just lock the opponent out of the game by combining Possibility Storm with cards like Adranith Magistrate, which says your opponents cannot cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So now, if our opponent tries to cast a spell, gets exiled by Possibility Storm, and then since they're trying to cast a card from exile, it's not going to work because of Magistrate, so now whatever spell our opponent casts is essentially going to go to waste. So that's one way to lock the opponent out of the game. Magistrate is definitely the best one since it's one-sided, it doesn't affect our spells, whereas we still get to randomize our cards with Possibility Storm. We can also symmetrically lock both players out of the game with Possibility Storm if we play High Noon, which says each player cannot cast more than one spell each turn, so once again, if someone tries to cast a spell, it gets replaced by the spell from Possibility Storm, which will then be the second spell for the turn, which is not allowed, so then High Noon can also lock both players out. Now at least with High Noon we can still sacrifice it to deal 5 damage to any target, so we can potentially break the lock if it's not favoring us, because we also need to make sure we're not behind on board when we establish the lock, since otherwise we're still gonna lose. And then we also have two copies of Archon of Emiria, which has a very similar effect, also lets non-basic clans enter the battlefield tapped on the opponent's side, so that can also maybe punish greedy mana bases. So outside of these cards, we're also playing a small exile package, which will then synergize with Adranith Magistrate. We're playing two copies of Invasion of Gobakan, which can exile a card from the opponent's hand that will cost two more to cast from exile, can also transform the invasion into the Light Shield array. So now if we exile an opposing card, then the opponent won't be able to cast it for as long as we control Drenith Magistrate, since it's not a card that's being cast from hand, similar to the Elite Spellbinder, which can also exile a card from the opponent's hand, so curving Magistrate into Spellbinder is excellent, and Spellbinder is also a nice three-powered flyer that can easily transform the invasion of Gobakan. And then Avon Interrupter also ties everything together nicely, can be a counter spell that exiles an opposing spell, which will then be plotted, so in theory the opponent could cast it for free on the following turn, but now spells your opponent's cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast, so it will still be taxed. And then multiple Interrupters are great, and we can also combine Interrupter with effects like Invasion of Gobakan or Spellbinder to make those spells even more expensive. And then a Soul Partition is the final piece of the puzzle, exiling target non land permanent at instant speed, and for as long as it remains exiled it will cost two more to redeploy from exile, can technically also target our own stuff, and then we don't have to pay the tax, it only applies to the opponent, but for the most part just an efficient removal spell that will synergize with Magistrate, preventing the opponent from replaying the spell, as well as good with the Avon Interrupter since the tax will be doubled. And then we've got some more removal. Lightning Helix can also gain us some life. We've got Torch the Tower. The Exile can be relevant against decks like Amalia, which like to recur creatures out of the graveyard. And then we have Bone Crusher Giant dealing two damage, and then a 4-3 afterwards. Now keep in mind, Possibility Storm only applies to spells cast from hand. So if we first use the Bone Crusher's Adventure and it's in exile, and then we deploy Possibility Storm, then afterwards we might still be able to cast the Bone Crusher and just get a 4-3 normally without going through Possibility Storm, and that's also relevant if we, let's say, lock the opponent out of the game with Possibility Storm plus maybe a High Noon, and then we already exiled an opposing card with Elite Spellbinder, then the opponent will still be able to play that exiled card because it's not in their hand, so it does get around Possibility Storm potentially, so that can also be important to remember. And then a Fable of the Mirror Breaker is also perfect here. The Shaman can potentially set up turn 2 Magistrate, turn 3 Fable, and then turn 4 Possibility Storm, which is the fastest we can lock someone out. And then with the second chapter we can sculpt our hand to assemble all the various combo pieces. And then Reflection of Kiki Jiki also has some very neat synergies here, especially good with Avon Interrupter, as we can maybe make a copy at instant speed to use it as a repeatable counter spell. Also very nice with cards like Elite Spellbinder, repeatedly re-triggering the Entered Battle 
battlefield ability and then eventually if we do lock both players out of the game the reflection of Kiki Jiki making copies can also be a way to kind of break the board stall to make sure we can still close it out and then a mana base also has a few goodies we've got the channel lanes for added interaction but also plenty of creature lanes Got a Den of the Bugbear, a Cave of the Frost Dragon, and then the uh, Bivouac as well. So if we do lock both players out of the game, having some powerful creature lands to close it out can also be important. Otherwise, just a lot of dual lands for added mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We have High Noon and Possibility Storm. So that could lock someone out of the game. I guess both players technically, until we decide to sacrifice it. Fable can set up a turn 4 possibility storm. And if we're up against a blue-red phoenix deck, High Noon can also make it very difficult for the opponent to get back phoenix by casting multiple spells. So, yeah, this hand has potential. Probably won't have my uh, Shaman token survive against a phoenix deck since they have plenty of removal. And now Ledger Shredder. High Noon is the perfect answer to it, since there's no way someone can cast two spells to enable it. Yeah, I think Fable's still the plan. And then, at the very least, I can uh, improve my hand next turn. Not sure how useful Spellbinder will be. Eidetic Memory can start growing a Ledger Shredder. And our opponent lets us untap. Discarding at least one possibility storm, and yeah, I think Spellbinder as well now. And go to attackers. Do we get a treasure? Okay, so now I can cast Possibility Storm. And then our opponent's locked out of casting spells. So are we but we'll eventually get a Reflection. Uh, does that beat a Ledger Shredder? If our opponent tries to race, we win the race. If they hang back, we can end of turn make a Shaman. I guess it doesn't really accomplish much, but uh, yeah. Might still be worth trying here. Alternatively, could Invasion keep up Interrupter or Soul Partition? So definitely an interesting spot. Can always eventually decide to sack High Noon to destroy the Shredder. So it's kind of funny here. Let's try it. Hope they don't have a spell pierce. Opponent opts. That's fine. That's the last spell they're casting for some time. Now they could still have an Odawara to bounce my enchantment. But otherwise there's going to be a very weird stalemate happening. Opponent tries to Lightning Axe, discarding Phoenix. Possibility Storm says no, and then High Noon says you cannot cast another spell. Bivouac was actually a great draw, gives us another win condition. And then now with the treasure, I'll have enough mana to activate High Noon if I really want to. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the way the game's progressing. Because now with Bivouac, we can potentially beat the Ledger Shredder. Opponents once again reading our enchantments, trying to figure out what's happening. But yeah, the only card that's relevant now from the opponent's deck is a channel land like Otawara, which can uh, potentially bounce an enchantment. I'll just take two. Take my turn, and then activate Reflection on the Shaman is probably best. Get us an extra treasure. Maybe should have animated the Bivouac as well. Because I'm probably not in a hurry to sacrifice High Noon. But on the off chance that our opponent was holding an Otawara, it would have been nice to have some instant speed interaction. Opponent has realized that they're better off hanging back now. That's fine. 
Now that missed counter on bivouac could actually end up mattering, since if I had a 3-3 bivouac, now a 4-4, it could actually attack past Shredder, but I guess now a 3-3 is still good enough to at least not die. And then next turn it can punch past it. Plus I could also use Reflection to make an extra bivouac. So, can try that, I guess. I guess it does enter tapped. So never mind, not super useful. But yeah, just counter on itself. Opponent's gonna block. But next turn we'll have a 4-4. See, I guess what I should have tried is Reflection copying the Bivouac end of turn. Then I do get to untap with it and I can attack with double Bivouac. But because the land enters tapped, it also applies to the copy from Reflection. We're learning. Not the most uh, intuitive mechanics. So for now, just take our turn. Animate Bivouac. Could send both Bivouac and the Shaman, so that can make more treasure, or I can just make a 4 4 Bivouac. Opponent takes it. And then end of turn we can either animate Bivouac and then copy it with Reflection or I can just make a copy of Shaman. Opponent trying the Picklock Prankster. It's not gonna make a difference. Slide of hands. Also not gonna work. So I guess we'll try this interaction, just out of curiosity. Animate Bivouac. Make a copy in the end step, so it will persist throughout our next turn. And then now the hope is that we have enough mana to activate both copies. And then if we attack all out, that... Uh, should be just enough. As long as I spread out my counters. Okay, that was fun. Yeah, High Noon definitely at its best against a Blue-Red Phoenix deck. For a second I thought our opponent found Odawara, but no, it's just another prankster. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Gigantha deck. Our hand seems fine. Not close to assembling any combo, but Interruptor is good in multiples. Opponent on an aggro deck. So could Torture Tower Lava Runner right now, to prevent any wizard synergies. But we'll wait and see what else they do. Waiting has the risk of a pump spell, maybe saving the Lava Runner. But they might have a more important 2-drop we need to take out. Uh, I guess we'll take it out now. So they couldn't enable uh, a Spectacle card. Alright, well our hand's not particularly effective against aggro. Interrupter is at its best when it's countering more expensive spells, but if our opponent's deck is just a pile of one drops and burn spells, it's not gonna get a time to shine. Opponent did have a Monstrous Rage, so they must have top decked it, so we got lucky that they didn't have it last turn. And they did also have a Spectacle card. So yeah, opponent's going off, Wizard's Lightning is 3 damage for 1 mana, opponent can play Kumano, and we're just way too far behind already. Now I will say, yeah, Speak of the Devil, Magistrate, I was going to mention, is good against all these cards in Exile. So if I cast Magistrate and our opponent's not paying attention, their Wizard's Lightning won't be able to be cast. 
My opponent is just gonna fire it off now. So opponent cannot play Kumeno. Unless they remove Magistrate first. So I think I still block the Soul Scar. For opponents, I guess has another Monstrous Rage, we get punished a little bit. One card in hand. If it's a two damage effect, they could also finish off the Magistrate. But I don't think I can afford to take damage for free. Opponent just putting Gigantha in hand. Kumano goes away and we found Possibility Storm. So yeah, next turn I could lock the opponent out of casting more spells. For now, I guess we'll keep up Interruptor over playing Fable to maybe counter Gigantha. Opponent's got the fifth land, please play Gigantha. Opponent's maybe looking at Den of the Bugbear. I guess it would be fine just trading Interruptor for Den. And then I can eat a 1-1 one -one token. Could also eat the Soul Scar Mage, take 6 down to 2. Let's uh, think about this. So, trade happens. I take 4 down to 4. Play Possibility Storm. Then our opponent could still activate Ramana Ruins for 2 more damage, which would force me to chump Lava Runner. And then we still die. But yeah, the alternative would be. Eat Soul Scar Mage takes 6, but then we're just dead to Ramana Ruins, so that doesn't help. Because we'll eventually need to uh, be able to beat it. Found Bone Crusher Giant. If I stomp Soul Scar and keep up Interruptor, then we still need to deal with Lava Runner if they attack us, because then Ramana Ruins is lethal. So yeah, even if I Possibility Storm and our opponent doesn't draw land for Ramana Ruins, I would still go to one and then ruins this lethal on the following turn. So I don't think that's an option here. So I need to be able to kind of handle the board a little bit more first, which I think means Stomp Soul Scar and then just cast Bone Crusher to try and trade for Lava Runner. But now Gigantha could be an issue if they draw the land for it. And double Ramana Ruins so they can just sacrifice those over the course of two turns. Opponent cast Gigantha instead. High Noon doesn't gain life, sadly. Yeah, we could still top deck a Lightning Helix maybe to beat the Ramana Ruins. And then for now, if I cast Possibility Storm, what happens? I would have to chump Gigantha with Magistrate, trade for Lava Runner. I guess we'll go Fable plus High Noon then. And maybe dig towards a Lightning Helix. High Noon would be an answer to Gigantha if we sacrifice it, but then I need to keep Magistrate alive. And I'm not gonna have the mana to both sack High Noon on Gigantha and cast a Lightning Helix to beat the Ramana Prunes activation. It's a bit of a tricky spot. We were very close to assembling the lock. But the lands are kind of making the difference here. Opponent using Gigantha for mana is interesting. Maybe they just have a burn spell or light up. Well, that's not going to do much with Magistrate in play. So Lava Runner attacks. Still going to block. And now we can play Possibility Storm. Problem being, with High Noon I'm also locking myself out of the game. So I might be better off sacking High Noon first, take care of Gigantha, and then hope to find a Lightning Helix to beat Ramana Ruins in the meantime. Spellbinder doesn't do it. So I think it's going to be High Noon, take care of Gigantha, and just attack with a Shaman to maybe block a Haste creature with Magistrate. But uh, Ramana Ruins is still a two-turn clock. Ferocidon now too prevents life gain. So I think our opponent's the one that locked us out of the game now. 
can uh, play Possibility Storm. Opponent cannot cast more spells. I guess we can double block for Ossidon. Alright, let's go for it just to show the lock. And then hope for Ossidon somehow attacks. And our opponent casts a spell instead of activate Ramonap Ruins. A lot needs to go right for us here. But yeah, opponent sees the line, sacks Ramonap Ruins, we're at one. Well, Kumano's not gonna work at least, so... They walked right into our trap. And Magistrate to draw, that's not a Lightning Helix, not that it would have helped with Ferocidon out. So if I cast a creature or make a copy with Reflection, we die to Frostdawn. If we let them untap, we die to Ramanap Ruins. So there's not much I can do, but yeah, GG's. Still a interesting game where we almost assembled the lock. And if it weren't for Ramanap Ruins, we might have gotten there. GG's. Otherwise, what would have happened, let's say we locked the opponent out, they can't attack with Frostedon, but we also can't make any extra creatures. Then I guess it would come down to decking, and our opponent would have decked first, although they likely would have found another Ramanap Ruins. In the meantime, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? I do like the sequence of Invasion into Spellbinder. Got some early removal. We can try. We'll have to play a tapped Sundown Pass if I want Invasion on two. So then we don't get to keep up Torch. Put on black-white. And looks like mono-white aggro. Alright, pretty powerful hand. Skyclave is an answer to some of my permanents. So that might be worth taking. And then we have ample answers to their creatures initially. Not sure what the black splash is for. Alright, so could also go for Spellbinder, but I think I should Torch while Aspirin's only a 2-2. Two -two. And we can keep up another copy. Thalia, I see. Well, that will be pretty effective here. So now might be the time for Spellbinder, which can then transform the invasion. Yeah, I guess if they can go Aspirin plus Lieutenant, they could grow Thalia up to four toughness, which would be bad. So I should go with either one of these. Let's go with Lieutenant's. Opponent plays Vanguard, hits us for three. And we found Possibility Storm, although no other card to lock the opponent out yet. We'll transform Invasion. And then keep up Avon Interrupter, which is pretty good with all these cards in exile. I guess I still need to pay the Thalia tax, but that's fine, we can still keep up three mana. It's easy to miss this interaction, and then sometimes you'll be unable to cast the backside of your uh, battle. So Aspirant, one card left. Not sure what that is, but let's just interrupt. It was a lieutenant. So they get to grow the team. Could technically block and then make even Interrupter indestructible. I think I'd rather hang on to it for a little bit longer. And then this turn could just attack with Avon Interrupter. Opponents kind of incentivized to play Aspirant before attacking, and then I can flash in another Interrupter. Will cost now four mana to play from Exile. And then I have two blockers, which I can make indestructible with the array. Seems reasonable. So 
So now I'm willing to sack the array if I can take two creatures out. Opponent just sending Thalia, so they might have a replacement. If we take out Thalia, I still have 7, 8, 9 in the air, so that's a two-turn clock. We have torched the tower, so I think we're still winning the race here. opponent had a replacement Thalia indeed. Now I could torch the tower, but this has wards and this is too big. And we cannot cast Possibility Storm, sadly. But if I attack all out, I can still torch. And we should have them next turn. Officer would grow Lieutenant. At this point, it's probably fine to take out the Lieutenant. And then our opponent can hit us for six and die on the way back. Alright, so didn't get to lock them out here, but some nice tempo plays still got it done. Okay, we're on the draw. We have Manchester and Possibility Storm. That's the best two-card combo we have, as it's one-sided. Can keep up Torch the Tower. And then Spellbinder, also a great follow-up to Manchester. Better opponent might have some removal. Waste not, opponent on the discard deck. Still gonna play Manchester. And then next turn we have a few options. But yeah, keeping a 5-mana card in hand against a Waste Knot deck is going to be difficult. And the rest for starters. Takes Possibility Storm. No fun allowed. And Thoughtseize can take one of my creatures. Make a zombie. Takes the Interrupter. Well, I'm just going to play the Spellbinder here. Can maybe take a removal spell, which they wouldn't be able to cast while we control Magistrate. Although her opponent's hand is quite stacked. Liliana can make me sack a creature. Shieldroods kind of just kills me and then go blank. Especially with a Waste Knot in play is quite brutal. Now we can answer Shieldroot with High Noon. Liliana. I would maybe just sack Magistrate so Spellbinder can finish it off. But then they will gain access to the Exiled card again. But uh, I think it's still go blank here. That way I can maybe deploy some things in the meantime. Bone plays Shieldreds. Take our draw step. And Gunja's interesting. I think we just uh, cast High Noon. And then I could Torch in the opponent's turn if needed. Could also, I guess, Torch the Zombie now. Play High Noon and then still have Torch available in the opponent's turn. It's maybe still reasonable. If I sack my enchantment to Torch, I can deal 3 damage. But at least by being empty-handed, their Waste Knot's not quite as effective. And then if we get to 5 mana, High Noon's an answer to Shieldred. So opponent casting a Go Blank means I have to Torch just so our opponent doesn't get to draw a card. So glad we torched a zombie when we did. Shieldred attacks. And another Magister at the draw. So this is not a race we're winning. But it just takes a land now to answer Shieldred. And we can sack a tap Magister to Liliana. Opponent with 
triple field of ruin and demolition field, so they're playing at least five of those effects, presumably. Found a Spellbinder. Yeah, untapped land would have been more useful. Can try and double block Shieldred. And then our opponent probably doesn't attack with it. We fall to two. And then hopefully we draw a painless untapped land for High Noon. And in the meantime we can take care of Liliana. If I attack with the Spellbinder then I'm going to be forced to chum block with the other one. That seems worse. I'll be back with friends. Opponent's got another Liliana. So if they minus, I need to sack Magistrates. So we can still double block Shieldreds. But then as the dust settles, we don't have much going on. So I'm curious if they attack here. They don't have to. Opponent's going to start attacking our mana base. We've got a few more basics. Opponent passes, still no land. So yeah, now we're just dead to Shieldred next turn. That's unfortunate. So never got to fifth land for High Noon. And Shieldred kind of carried the opponent here. I guess I could have considered not playing Magistrate, hope the opponent somehow activates Field of Ruin, of so I get to float a mana and then activate High Noon. And technically we could have still survived had we top decked Lightning Helix, because then I could have responded to the Shieldred trigger to gain three. But alas, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand. Some removal, Magistrate waiting for Possibility Storm. Opponent on a Graveyard deck. Looks like a Grease Fang deck to me. Alright, so we have Helix to deal 3 damage. That's important against Grease Fang. We'll see if we need to keep it up right away. Another Supplier. So gotta keep an eye on vehicles. All right, maybe this isn't Grease Fang or it's a different version since we usually don't see blue. Um, still probably fine to keep up a removal spell. And then next turn we can look into Fable. Our best curve would have been turn two Magistrate, turn three Fable, and then if we make a treasure, Possibility Storm on four. Could lock the opponent out of the game already. Opponent with Tyvar now. And they're gonna minus, so that would at the very least get back a Wayfinder. Um, sure. We'll let that happen and then we can maybe stomp Tyvar. If there's nothing else I need to take out. We can win. Opponent revealing a gaze. I see Harald unites the elves. So that's what they're trying to set up. Harald plus... Um, I forget the name of the snow creature that can make copies of it. It's basically an infinite loop once they assemble all the right pieces. Okay, so still gonna go for Fable here. So we can develop our mana. And hope we don't get comboed off. Squirming Emergence gets back Harald Unites, which can in turn get back uh, Tyvar. But it doesn't look like they can infinitely combo this turn. There's already their win condition in the graveyard, Thassa's Oracle. So they're just looking to mill their entire deck. Yeah, I believe it's Moritz of the Frost, which they're looking for. Alright, so what do we get rid of? See, so yeah, I don't think Tyvar really matters right now. So instead, discard Helix and maybe one soul partition. And then we can attack. Opponent would get to block with a supplier to mill more cards. 
which is maybe still acceptable. We want to be able to play Magistrate and then next turn Possibility Storm to lock them out. And then Magistrate also prevents him from flashing anything back. Mill three more. Okay, so we'll play Magistrate. And then I could keep up Avon Interrupter as well. Although then next turn I might lack the mana to cast Possibility Storm. Might still be safer than just Soul Partition. So your opponent cannot flash anything back now because of Magistrate. But there's Morit of the Frost, so that's what they're trying to combine with Harold Unites the Elves. They still need another Morit, I believe, to actually go infinite. But let's just use the Interrupter here. Or we could Soul Partition the Enchantment. That would also kind of do it here, because then Moritz just copies Tyvar, which doesn't do anything. That way I get to save my treasure for Possibility Storm. So opponent makes another Tyvar. It's going to minus, finds another Moritz, but they cannot get that one back. Goes for Oracle. 17 cards in Library, so doesn't win the game. Okay, so I think we are getting there. Cast Possibility Storm, which locks the opponent out of the game, but Magistrate is one-sided, so we're still good to go. And then next turn, we also get to copy stuff with Reflection. So yeah, I believe we successfully locked them out, unless they have a Boseju. We can have a look in their graveyard to see if we milled it already. We did. So Busage is otherwise an answer to our enchantment still. Because if our opponent tries to cast a spell, it goes through Possibility Storm, gets exiled, and they cannot cast spells from exile. There's that second wind. As we'll see here, Squirming Emergence turns into another Squirming Emergence, but they cannot cast it because of Magistrate. Opponent's coming to that realization. Alright, so we get to untap, and then probably safest to try and deal with Tyvar. Could play Interrupter, and then make a copy with Reflection. Although, yeah, I guess we still have to go through our own Possibility Storm. But we might hit another Flying Creature. Alright, we hit another Magistrate. Play Magistrate, see what we get. Now if we play Bone Crusher, since it's from Exile, it's um, still fine since it won't trigger Possibility Storm since it's only from our hand. But we did find a Flyer. Now Archon is symmetrical, so now we're also locked out of the game. Or at least from casting more spells. But we have enough on the battlefield to win here. Especially with the reflection of Kiki Jiki. But yeah, we can still cast a Bone Crusher. Because that would be our first spell. And it doesn't trigger Possibility Storm. So there's a lot happening here, but I believe our opponents are locked out of casting anything else. And I don't see them winning otherwise. And with Double Magistrate and Archon, we have a lot of redundancy here, on the off chance that our opponent had some, maybe, channel effect. But I guess if they had a Ottawara, they would just bounce the Possibility Storm itself. Alright, so we get to see our Boros Prison deck in action. And I definitely would not recommend this as a competitive choice, but you can maybe get away with it on the casual queue. And if you ever do get to assemble the combo to lock the opponent out, it can be incredibly satisfying and also funny to see how the opponent still tries to cast their spells when uh, it doesn't really help them in any way. So definitely more of a meme deck, but always funny to see them in action. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.